with a design from 1718 by James Puckle, some plate steel, a demilled 40mm anti-aircraft barrel, and some clever uh, metalworking skills, I decided to recreate uh, and upgrade a design of the Puckle Revolving Repeating Cannon by James Puckle. I started my project making a prototype in a smaller caliber, worked out all the bugs, the design issues, the uh, uh, trying to foresee problems before I tackled it on a larger scale gun. I had a successful build on the smaller model and decided that going to the 40 millimeter high pressure system would be quite feasible. As you can see, the chambers are mounted to a single circular plate that has a captive nut in the crank. The captive nut is turned, driving the plate with the chambers firmly into the breech of the barrel. As the shot is made, the crank is backed off, the cylinder is rotated over to the next chamber for firing. Here's the receiver being machined out from chromoly alloy steel. Uh, in preparation for mounting to the barrel. Here the trunnions have been turned out and then added to the receiver with reinforcing rings. Once the trunnions have been welded in place, the receiver is now ready to be fitted to the barrel. The receiver's inside dimension is smaller than the barrel's outside dimension. This allowed me to shrink fit the receiver onto the barrel, locking it permanently in place. Here I am manufacturing the housing that will enclose the captive nut, which will allow the plate to be driven forward and backwards on the gun's threaded axle. Here are the chambers made from chromoly steel solid billets. They have been prepared to be mounted to the plate, as you see, being bored uh, here to receive them. And here we have the chambers mounted to the plate. Here a platform has been machined on the receiver to receive a pedestal that will be the hinge block for the firing mechanism. Here is the main body of the firing mechanism made from stainless steel. Here we have the blank for the hammer. Here is the hammer uh, being machined off and finally the hammer completed with a grab ring and ready to receive a spring from an AR-15 trigger mechanism. This drives the hammer hard enough to ignite the percussion cap. This is the uh, material that was used for the lever that allows the hammer to be operated. At this point, the gun is mechanically ready to be fired. Brass rings have been made to prevent catastrophic chain firing, uh, igniting all chambers at once if a spark gets away. The touch holes are brought into alignment with each shot, and the other chambers are kept covered to prevent such a chain fire. Here are blocks of steel that are welded together to form plates. The plates will then be machined and bored to make the trunnion blocks that support the cannon in the carriage or cradle. The cradle is fabricated with the trunnion blocks mounted to the gun. This is to ensure proper alignment and to ensure that the cradle will not deform and place the gun out of alignment to the trunnion blocks. Here we have the plate and hardware to make a bearing plate and pintle which is mounted to the cradle which will then fit to the mounting on the carriage. Here are the components that will make the tripod for the puckle gun. Here you see the pintle and bearing plate that will be mounted to the foreleg of the tripod. Here you will see a completed tripod and gun mount. 
Here you see the fabrication of a low pressure cylinder block suitable for smokes and pyrotechnics. All right, amazing puckle gun, firing low pressure system. Done. Okay. Okay. High pressure. Okay.